you that they're reading their holy Quran, which tells them to kill the infidel wherever they meet him, and we're bringing them in by the hundreds of thousands. We are committing national suicide. I, I can't, I can't put a ribbon around the insanity of this government. Listen to the next little piece from Homeland. Well, what would you do? You offering me a promotion? <laughs> I'm offering you a hypothetical. 200,000 American troops on the ground indefinitely to provide security and support for an equal number of doctors and elementary school teachers. Well, that's not going to happen. Then I better get back there. What else? What else would make a difference? Hit reset. Meaning what? Meaning pound Raqqa into a parking lot. Okay, does that say it all? So Obama goes in on tiptoes talking loudly, carrying a limp stick. Obama, Obama goes in talking loudly, carrying a limp stick, does nothing to ISIS to degrade them. Nothing that we know of. They've been growing. They've been t Who can argue with me? Hello, raise your hand, fools. Raise your hand, all you, you slavish worshipers, you fools, you. You're going to tell me Obama's success in Syria is evident? His success against ISIS is evident when they've grown, they've metastasized like a cancer, taken over territory larger than that of Great Britain? No, it's a complete abject failure, or he's enabling them. It doesn't matter. Russia goes in, and in a week, they're degraded. They're running like rats out of a, that got sprayed with a, with a toxic poison, like warfarin came out of the sky. So, my friends, these are strange times indeed. Russia should be our ally. Instead, your sick, psycho government has turned our natural ally against radical Islam into an enemy. That's the sorority. That's Obama. That's government zero. No strategy whatsoever. You know, yesterday, well, I won't go into yesterday. I'll give you, I'll read you a haiku. Daughter, granddaughter, house full of dogs, Chinese food takeout cartons. The day started weird. That's all I can say. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Mr. Putin. I say Putin, because it reminds you of Rasputin. It's like another word, guitar. No one knows how to pronounce that country, gutter. They used to say gutter. Then they said, we can't call a country gutter. So they're Qatar. It's like bad marketing, man, a country name like guitar, Qatar. People trip on the word of your country. How good can that be for business? Where are you from? Good gutter? So you've got to change the name of that country. You're like, okay, so Arabia's you taken. Can't name it Arabia North or Arabia East. What can we name it? The new, I don't know, something new. Give it an English name. Hire a marketing company. Change the name of your country. Speaking of marketing, this just came in from uh, TalkStream Live. And look, if I don't do it, who's going to do it? Someone else? My ratings are so high in streaming radio, it's off the charts. It's Babe Ruth. Michael Savage has a 27 share of talk radio streaming audiences. Do you know what that means? It's the highest ever. Ta Savage takes the top spot once again, further ex extending his number one streak with massive margins over all other talk competitors, followed by Rush Limba at number two with a 13.9 share. Now, this is... This is an historic statement I'm reading to you now in talk radio. Because everyone says, oh, talk radio's this, talk radio's that, talk radio's this. You know, What do you think, Zuckerberg controls this? Zuckerberg doesn't control this, you control this. So I want to thank you for that. And I'm the only one promoting my show, so you've got to understand how hard this is. And I, that's all I'm going to say. And I want to go back to the war against ISIS. A friend of mine sent me this from VeteransToday.com. Russian airstrikes continue to pound terrorist targets. No, it's not a Russian front group. It's a U.S. veterans website, moron. Are you ready for this? Thank you, Mr. Putin, for finally doing what others have been paid to do but chose not to do. Russia continues to roll out its bombing campaign, putting on display for us all the systematic destruction of terrorist infrastructure prior to a ground offensive by the Syrian army in the future. The U.S. coalition is fuming at the elimination of its non-IS terror groups that it would prefer to be left untouched to continue their terror rampage while fighting the Syrian army. Did you hear that? What is at stake here is the potential retreat of these terror groups. But where would they go? Turkey would be open. 
but it would hurt terrorist recruitment if they went there. And if they moved into Iraq, they would, of course, create more problems there, but they would be more out in the open for airstrikes. We have seen the Russians already take out one retreating convoy in Syria, something the U.S. coalition rarely seems to be able to do, despite its expensive total battlefield surveillance, which the taxpayers have funded with deficit spending. Once the main ground assault begins and the IS fighters know their ammo dumps are gone, including hopefully their tow missile stockpiles, which they have been saving to destroy the Syrian armor, they will need continuous supply columns from Turkey and Saudi Arabia to sustain them. Sorry. The Russian air power will then switch to hunting and destroying these columns en route, plus giving close air support for the Syrian army. Will the Saudis and Turkey commit their planes to air cover for their terrorist units in the field? You understand what they're saying here? Saudi Arabia and Turkey, will they commit their planes to cover their terrorist units in the field? Will the U.S.? The White House and the Pentagon have already made ridiculous statements about the Russians not playing fair by attacking their terrorist proxies. Will the Israelis commit their planes? Would anyone dare to attack the Russian and Syrian air bases with planes and missiles? How would Russia respond if someone actually did? The big joke here is we may see the Russians tip the scales of the battle significantly at a tiny cost to what has been sucked out of the American people for their make-believe U.S. effort. Which, will, which still seeks a military victory over Assad. What will the American people have to say about that when they figure out, those still asleep, that much of the war on terror has been corporate welfare to some of the major defense companies? Thank you, Mr. Putin, for finally doing what others have been paid to do but chose not to do, Jim W. Dean in Veterans Today. And now I want to segue to something that's very important, very important. It's a chapter in Government Zero entitled Zero Strategy Against ISIS. And I want to read it to you. I want to read you a few of the headlines, rather. I'm not going to read it to you. My chapter, Zero Strategy Against ISIS, says it all. See, I've been on to this for at least a year. Zero Strategy Against ISIS. One, showing our hand. Two, the America Obama loves. Three, what's in a name? Undermining intelligence. A Hobson's choice. The enemy, the enemy's within. Where is the media? The New Good Germans, Islam's thousand-year war on the West, direct action for nuclear Iran, denying the global threat. It's all in the chapter. And I don't want to read it to you right now. I'm going to wait. You'll buy it. Then we'll read it on the air. I'm not going to do it. Buy it on Amazon. Make sure you get the copies while they're out there. I don't know what's going to happen with the book. I don't know what's going to happen with the world. But I do know this. I do know that Russia's taking care of business, and we're not. And it's showing America for what it is. And it's sad to say that most Americans today who are patriotic are actually cheering on Putin now that he's doing what we've all wanted to be done to ISIS. Now, again, you could cheer on Putin for his destruction of ISIS without cheering on Assad. Do you understand it's not one and the same thing? Because my suspicion is, is that after he cleans things up there, the mess created by Obama, I believe that Assad will be... Um, relieved of his duties to put it to you that way he will go they'll put in another leader another puppet just like we used to do with iran or whatever they'll put in a puppet of theirs but it won't be assad because he's too unpopular he divided the people and then they'll probably partition syria into se sections with different world powers getting the spoils as they did uh, to uh, germany but in probably four or five partitions rather than two that's probably what's going to happen 855-407-282. Putin or Putin is the answer, is the question. And there's other stories that caught my eye that have absolutely nothing to do with Russia. Here's one that caught my eye. I, I saw it two days in a row. Here's a woman, a doctor in New York. Doctor met with Facebook friend, used cocaine before death, sources say. I was reading the post. So here's a good-looking, thin, blonde doctor from Long Island, 38 years old, top credentials as a medical doctor, dermatologist from Manhasset, Long Island, married mother of three, with a husband. She goes into Manhattan, honey, I'm going to meet some friends for a night. They find her in a doorway, dead, two days later. Now they find coke in her system. Servini, a married mother of three, had met up with the producer, Mark Henry, uh, who was also married on the Lower East Side, and they went to the Chelsea apartment together. Serena used cocaine at some point before her death. A building resident described the frantic scene of paramedics, blah, blah, blah. 
She came out topless. Her face was white and her lips were blue. They were doing chest compressions. The man standing next to her was pacing. He looked suspicious because he was pacing indecisively. Okay, you, you can put the, the pieces together of this story. Uh, girls just want to have fun. Crazy woman went nuts. Party girl couldn't take the constraints of her perfect life. Who knows the answer? All I know is this. Here's a woman. Could you imagine how hard it is to become a doctor to begin with? How hard is it to become a doctor to get into a good medical school? She goes to one of the best medical schools. She has a booming practice in Manhasset. In Manhasset. Lovely children, great-looking husband, beautiful home, but it wasn't enough. So where does she turn for her uh, satisfaction since she can't get no satisfaction? Drugs, sex, and rock and roll. It's that simple. And where do drugs, sex, and rock and roll lead her, my friends? The same place it leads everybody, to hell and not back. It's that simple. You know, the wages of sin is death. It's not the wages of sin are death. That's, that's wrong. Read the Bible. It says the wages of sin is death. And we all know it. We f fight it every day, all of us. Everyone is fighting doing something wrong, whether it's eating a chocolate cake or doing something worse. I've told you that. So no one's above it. And every one of us is no angel. Let's be very clear about that. But this story is so incredibly sad for people out there who are tempted to just cross over to the dark side for just a little while, because there is no little while on the dark side. I got to tell you, it's very hard to come back from that dark side. Ask anyone who's ever gone there if they could easily step back from the dark side uh, and just take the LIRR home and clean up in the bathroom and come home and say, hi, hon, I'm home. Doesn't often work out that way. And so here we are. I mean, we're attacked from within from the drug epidemic. I mean, we have an epidemic in this country of drugs that is so big and the only reason you don't hear about it is because most of the news people are on drugs oh i don't mean they're cokeheads don't get me wrong if i would I, i'd make a fair estimate and i would i would just bet if i were jimmy the greek that the people you see are all cleaned up on tv with the nice mustaches if they have one the uh, nice suits the perfect uh, tie uh drugs whether it's prescription or otherwise a high percentage let's put it that way we can't make an exact percentage. High, high. In order to maintain the lie, in order to maintain the front, they're stoned out of their minds. That's my guess. So that's why the news is what it is. It's garbage. It's garbage news. There's no other reason that a show like mine thrives. Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? Yes, I'm telling you how great I am. Yeah, you, you read the message. Between the lines. No, I don't use drugs. I struggle with depression, but I have many methods of fighting depression other than using drugs. The main thing is my radio show. I live for this show, and you can hear it. You can hear that when I get on the air, I am walking on a high wire that is real high, and that's my high. And for 21 hours, I live in hell like the rest of you. But for three hours, I fly like an eagle. And I use these hours in flying like an eagle to try to bring you to a level where you can look down on what's going on in your world. That is what I'm doing. And I do it every day. And God has given me this ability to do it. He's given me the voice. He's given me the heart. He's given me the mind. He's given me the age. He's given it to me all on a silver platter. And I don't intend to squander it by getting up here and talking about uh, irrelevant things on a regular basis. I'll do it once in a while to change the pace, break it up, break up the monotony. But I'm 24-7. I'm a 24-7 guy. I'm on 24-7. Yesterday, things hit a new bottom. And I wrote a little... Story to myself, one line I wrote. If floors had locks, I'd seal mine shut to keep from falling into hell. That gives you some idea of the day I had before it became a better day when I saw my granddaughter. And then suddenly there was no hell, it was all heaven. To see a little child come out of a, a, a child you created is something you'll never understand until you've done it. And then when you do, you realize why people kill for their family. Why people kill for their family. Why people kill for their family. Why people kill for their family and then their neighborhood and then their nation. And that's what I'm talking about, which is why the left has gone after the building block of our nation. They have attacked the family from the get-go. That's what it's all about. They took the church apart. They took the nuclear family apart. They take the children's brains apart. And that's how they destroy a nation. That's my perspective. And that's our battle. That's our daily battle. And don't forget for a minute, you are in a fight for your life. Whether you are, let us say, a family man, and you have some children, maybe younger children, you have a road ahead of you that is the hardest road you could ever have. And I, I'm speaking directly to young families out there. 
I'm telling you, it's the hardest road you could ever go down. There's a lot of young men who listen to this show. I know what my demographics are. And I know a lot of young guys listen to the show because I'm the uncle that they wish they had. The uncles are gone. They're nowhere to be found. But the fact is, is I'm the uncle of the airways, if you want to